When you were little, did you ever have imaginary friends? Many children have them, as strange as it may seem, it is something completely normal. When I was a kid, I always had imaginary friends. And maybe that's why my parents didn't believe me when something real happened. During that time, everyone thought I had imaginary friends when in reality, I was being stalked by something much, much more sinister. It all started a few years ago when I was just a curious 10-year-old boy living in a fairly normal house on the outskirts of town. It was one of those new houses with big windows and a well-kept garden. I lived there all my life and we knew all the neighbors. Everything was perfect in my carefree life as a child until I started seeing her. I don't remember exactly when it all started, but one day as I was looking out of my bedroom window, I saw a friendly old lady standing on the sidewalk in front of my house. She seemed to smile at me and wave a hand. At first, I thought she was just an old lady passing through the neighborhood who had stopped to greet me as happened to me many times. I waved back, but as I was waving, I noticed something that made me freeze. With the hand with which the lady was not greeting me, she was holding a huge knife. The moment I saw that, I took a better look at the lady and noticed that her smile was not as friendly as it seemed. She was staring at me with a penetrating gaze that felt like it could pierce my bedroom window. The hand she was waving at me was completely stiff and I could see her trembling with impatience. Absolutely terrified by what I was seeing, I stopped waving and ran to tell my parents. But when I told them what was happening, they were as frightened as I was and ran to my window, but the lady was gone. My father, still not satisfied with not seeing her, went out the door of the house, looking everywhere in the street. There was no one there either, and there couldn't possibly have been since he didn't see anyone on the sidewalk walking away. My parents got very angry. They started to tell me that I couldn't make jokes about such things and that I didn't understand the scare I gave them. I told them over and over again that they were wrong, that she was probably still hiding out there, but they didn't believe me anymore. The following night, everything got worse. Whenever I looked out the window, she was there, waving friendly to me with her knife in her hand. I tried to tell my parents again and again. At first, they kept looking to see if anyone was there, but as the days went by, they ignored me or told me to stop making up stories. I even tried to record her with my phone, but every time I did, she would mysteriously disappear from the screen. Eventually, I got used to her presence, although she never stopped scaring me. I noticed that she never appeared when other people were around. It was as if she only wanted to torture me. One day, while I was home alone, I saw her again. But this time something was different. She seemed closer than usual, almost as if she was just on the other side of my window. I felt a shiver run down my spine and I slowly moved away, not taking my eyes off her. Then suddenly I saw her hand slowly rise, holding the knife. My eyes widened like saucers and my heart began to pound. How could this be the work of my imagination? She was there, slowly tapping the window with the knife, waving at me and inviting me to go out with her. She might be small, but she was very smart for my age, and despite being terrified, I was so used to seeing her that I had become accustomed to her presence. Instead of screaming and running around looking for my parents, I knew I had to do something else. When I saw her approaching, I knew she couldn't get away. I grabbed my phone and started recording. The moonlight illuminated her haggard face as she held the knife tightly. This time, she didn't even try to run away. For some reason, she didn't seem interested in being filmed. She always smiled at me, but this time her smile was different. It was a mocking smile, as if she knew something I didn't. I was so focused on filming her that I didn't want to film her. I was so focused on filming her that I barely noticed what was happening right under my nose. The lady, the old lady was opening the window of my room. How could I have been so careless? I had left the window unlocked. My heart stopped for a moment before it began to pound harder than ever. I instinctively stepped back, feeling fear take hold of me. Without realizing it, by backing away, I was not only moving away from the lady, but also from the exit door. I tried to scream as loud as I could, but the breath wouldn't leave my lungs. I was so scared. Without realizing it, I peed all my pants and started crying. What else could I do? I was just a kid! When she saw me, the lady started to laugh softly, as if she was tenderly afraid of my fear. Meanwhile, she was slowly approaching me. She was getting closer and closer. As she finished approaching, the hand with which she normally greeted me made a different gesture. It was a gesture of silence. She wanted me to be quiet. 
In the meantime, I could see her grip her knife with her other hand, getting tighter and tighter. She was ready to use it on me. I could feel it. When I had her next to me, I did the only thing I could do in a situation like that. I felt a sensation of adrenaline running through my body and as a survival system, the air came back into my lungs and I did the only thing I could do. I screamed. I closed my eyes and screamed with all my strength. I screamed as if it was the last scream I would ever scream in my life and I decided not to open my eyes until the scream was over. Suddenly, I felt heavy footsteps coming from the kitchen. My parents came running towards me, alarmed by my screams. By the time they reached my room, the old woman had vanished again. I told them what had happened. I told them that the old woman had appeared again and that this time she had entered the room. They looked at the window and noticed that it was open, but they still didn't believe me. Unlike the other times, this time they didn't get angry, but looked at me worriedly and looked at each other. I'm sure they thought they had to take me to therapy or that maybe I had some problems to be treated, but no. This time I had proof to show. This time, I had proof to show them the truth. I immediately showed them my cell phone. I showed them the video I recorded and finally they saw the truth. They were both completely frozen with surprise and fear. My mom hugged me tightly while my dad looked at the screen over and over in disbelief. Finally, they believed me. We called the police and showed them the video. As if that wasn't enough, the video was poorly recorded and shaky, but my dad had kept something from me. Despite not believing me, shortly before he installed a CCTV outside my house, and when they went to check it, the evidence was clearer than ever. Once they saw the tapes, the cops began to investigate and discovered that the old lady was actually a woman who lived in a nearby house and had been stalking us for months. It turned out that she was suffering from mental disorders and had been stalking the neighborhood children. She never really tried to hurt me, but the mere sight of her with a knife was enough to terrify me. Besides, she was getting closer and closer, and that last time, she came into my room and got face to face with me. After that, we moved out of that house. I never saw the old woman again, but after that, I was left with a fear that I can never erase. Many years later, I still see old people, and I am afraid. Obviously, I know they won't do anything to me, and I know that not all old people are psychopaths with knives, but anyway, my body still reacts and tenses up. To tell the truth, I feel that this old woman will be with me for life since I will never forget her. Hello. My name is Amir, and I live with my wife Claire in a hotel in Utah. We used to have a house, but it is currently for sale. Normally people sell houses before they move out, but we didn't. We didn't leave under normal circumstances. We left, or rather we escaped, because we found out that there is someone, or something, living in the house with us. It all started in our second year in the house. We had moved in shortly after my grandparents had died almost a month apart. Although it was a terrible coincidence, the causes were natural, and since we needed a place to live and I had no siblings to fight over the house with, we decided to stay and live there. When we finished moving in, everything was phenomenal. It wasn't a huge house. It was one of those houses where you feel like a bunch of grandparents were definitely living there, but we were very happy, and we couldn't help but imagine that someday we would be those grandparents. We finished the move quickly and settled in. I'm not going to lie to you and say that we went two years without anything happening. To tell you the truth, we had a lot of red flags before the worst happened. From day one, we heard strange noises, unusual knocks, and doors closing where there was no wind. But somehow or other, we lied to ourselves over and over again, telling ourselves it was just a coincidence. It all went on for a while until one day, one day we couldn't lie to ourselves anymore. That day, Claire had decided to go to sleep on the couch, since we had to change the mattress because it was so old and uncomfortable. Unlike Claire, I didn't have back problems, so even though I found it very uncomfortable, I could sleep on it. It took me a while to fall asleep, as it was very cold in the house that day, even though we had been in the middle of spring. After a while, I could fall asleep, but suddenly, Claire woke me up in the middle of the night, and I almost jumped out of my bed, terrified. Amir, you have to come. 
Something strange is going on in the dining room. The couch. It got up by itself. I also heard something out the window. I think there was someone behind it. Someone like a burglar? No, it was different. That's the noise we always hear in the house. Like someone scratching at the window. Amir, I don't think this is a rat. The room got so cold. I swear I was scared to death. Hey, hey, take it easy. Let me stay in the dining room and see if anything is going on. If something's going on, I'll find out. Besides, we can check the cameras in the morning. Is that okay? Why can't we check them now? You shouldn't stay there. I swear to you, it's not a lie. Something raised the couch while I was sleeping. Hey, don't worry. You're scared. Maybe you had a nightmare, and if it's the same noise we heard here, then it's probably a rat or something. Trust me, we'll check tomorrow. I'll be honest, I didn't believe anything Claire told me. I didn't doubt that she was telling the truth, but I was still sure that she was wrong. In the previous days, she had been a bit suggestible about the house, and I was sure it was affecting her. To be honest, she didn't want to check the cameras because she was sleepy. Very sleepy. I just wanted to keep sleeping. Once in the dining room, I felt that change in temperature that Claire had mentioned. But it wasn't that big of a deal. The whole house was cold, and it was pretty obvious that near the front door it was going to get even colder. As Claire lay down on the bed, I lay down on the couch where she had been and tried to sleep. Honestly, I fell asleep pretty quickly. I was very sleepy, and within seconds of lying down, I had fallen asleep, but that wouldn't last long. A few minutes after I went to bed, I felt someone touch my head, and I woke up startled. I turned to see if it was Claire, but there was no one there. I started to feel very, very cold. This didn't make any kind of sense until two or three minutes ago the temperature was totally different. Suddenly the house felt like a freezer. Still pretty much asleep, I felt something pull me out of my clothes and I fell off of the couch. At that moment, the panic was absolute. I ran out of the place as fast as I could. I went to the bed to see if Claire had anything to do with it, but she was completely asleep. The temperature had changed radically again. It wasn't so cold anymore, just normal temperature. I thought about waking Claire up, but that would only make things worse. I went out into the yard and grabbed a huge branch. Then I put on some clothes and decided to investigate if there was someone or something causing this. I admit I didn't have the best idea. What would happen if I found something? Would I hit a ghost with a branch? As crazy as it seemed, at that moment, I didn't think, I just acted, and I admit that even if it didn't make sense, that branch made me feel more powerful. When I got to the room, I started to check the whole room, from top to bottom. I knew that if I looked hard enough, I would find something. At that moment, I felt a noise at the window. It was a scratch. I ran out the door to see if anyone was there, but no, the neighborhood was completely empty. Everyone in their homes was asleep, except me. I went back to my house and left the branch in the yard. I went back to bed, still scared, determined to look at the cameras the next day. The computer was in my room, and if I started checking the cameras, I knew I would terrify Claire. Did you find anything? No, I guess it was just a noise. Anyway, we'll check the cameras tomorrow to put your mind at ease, okay? Alright. I mean it, Amir. There was something there. Stay calm, tomorrow we'll know what happened. Okay. Claire tried to go back to sleep. She too had fallen asleep very fast. She must have been very stressed. Within minutes, she was asleep, but I wasn't. I couldn't close my eyes. The one who was now terrified was me. I tried to close my eyes to convince myself that it was all in my imagination, but something was wrong. I could feel it. As if confirming my fears, I noticed that the bathroom light in our room was on. The door was closed, but I could see a shadow moving behind it. How had that happened? Ghost or not, there was someone in our house. I looked around me, what was the closest thing to us that I could use as a weapon? My field hockey stick? I grabbed my makeshift weapon and slowly I made my way to the bathroom door. As if reacting to me, it began to open slowly and someone came out of the bathroom. It was Claire brushing her teeth and looking at me with confusion. If Claire was in the bathroom, who was next to me? I turned around and looked at the bed again. Claire was staring at me in confusion. Hey, what are you doing with that? Did something happen? Ah! Ah! What the hell is that? 
At that moment, neither of us hesitated for a second. We both got up and ran as fast as we could out of the house. We went to the car with nothing but the keys and stayed in it all night. The next day, we returned to the house. Confident in the sunlight, we searched the house from top to bottom, but there was nothing and no one there. We checked the cameras as soon as we were sure we were alone, and there we saw him. That thing that scared me the night before was watching me and Claire through the window while we were on the couch. We got all our stuff together and went to a hotel. We put the house on the market right away, and to this day we still hope to sell it. From that day on, Claire and I began to trust our instincts. If Claire hadn't gone to sleep in the dining room that night and we both slept soundly in bed, who knows what would have happened. My name is Alan, and I have something to tell you. The story of how a little extra precaution I took to keep my family safe turned into a nightmare that could have ended my life and all of theirs. I will start telling you the story from the beginning. Like almost everyone else, I also have a ring camera. But it wasn't always that way. All my neighbors were always overly paranoid, but I always considered myself a person who didn't worry about much. Simple in my own way, quiet and even trusting. But something strange started to happen, and even I couldn't turn a blind eye to it. When I would wake up, my children would always tell me that during the night, they saw strange silhouettes walking around the house outside. These people were not just teenagers walking down the sidewalk, but invaders trying to spy from outside my children's room. At first, I thought it was just their imagination since I always trusted that this neighborhood was very safe. But when the problems became more and more frequent and I began to see footprints in the driveway, even I could no longer ignore what was going on. I installed a ring camera on my front door because from there I could see the identity of the person who was stalking my children and at the same time threatening to enter our house. In theory, this was a good idea, but there was no way of knowing how our intruder was about to react to being watched. The night it all happened, I was in the dining room waiting for the man while watching the camera. At first, I saw one of them just hovering around my house. The man was truly terrifying. Physically, nothing about him stood out, but everything changed when you looked at his face. The man had a huge, terrifying mask. The man looked from one side to the other and reached the door, where he simply stood and looked at it. It was then that he realized that there was a camera. As soon as he saw the camera, the invader pulled out a piece of tape from his pocket and covered it up. Now I could see nothing of what was going on outside, and quickly the noises began. I may have only seen one person on the camera, but there were certainly many invaders stalking me and my family's home. My first reaction was to wake my family and run, but that was too dangerous. I didn't know how many of them were surrounding the house and what their plans were with us. I woke my children and told them to wait in hiding while my wife stayed with them in the upstairs bedroom and called the police. I thought about hiding with them, but there was something I had to do first. To buy some time, the smart thing to do was to lock as many doors as possible, as some windows might be open and other doors unlocked. I went downstairs as fast as I could to make sure everything was in order when the police arrived. And that was my first big mistake. By the time I got downstairs, I must have realized that I should have been hiding with my family because the first thing I noticed was that the back door, the kitchen door, was open. I quickly ran towards it to close it, and once I did, someone knocked loudly from behind. After a few seconds, the knocking stopped and the person behind the door left. I was relieved for a few seconds, but quickly realized the mistake I was making. If someone opened that door, that someone must already be inside the house. A huge feeling of adrenaline and terror came over me as I realized what this meant. While I was pressing the kitchen door, one of those stalkers could have quietly slipped into the room where my wife and children were hiding. As soon as the thought crossed my mind, I ran desperately for the stairs, but something interrupted my path. Out of nowhere, another one of the men with his face covered with a mask came out of the darkness of my house and charged at me, knocking me to the ground and climbing on top of me. You can come now, guys. With a given signal, the kitchen door opened and one of the men came in. At the same time, another one came down the stairs and this one was with my wife and children, who were crying desperately, begging not to be hurt. The two men stood behind me, while the man who was holding me took a hammer out of his hands. What are you going to do? If they want to rob us, we'll stay here, but please don't hurt us. Robbing you? If we wanted to rob you, we would have done it in the afternoon when the house is empty. We came here to kill you, one by one in the most cruel and painful ways you can imagine. Why? We haven't done anything. Why? Even we don't agree. I'm afraid doing this for fame 
I'm going to rob you when you're dead, so I'm doing it for the money. <laughs> and I... I do it for fun. Please, leave my family out of this. We didn't even see your faces. Do with me what you want. Don't worry. You look like a nice man. That's why we'll kill you first. You are not even going to see your family die. Having said that, the man who had entered through the kitchen approached me with a hammer. Before I could ask what it was for, he stretched out one of my arms and started pounding his hammer on my fingers. <coughs> my whole family was crying. Everyone was calling for them to stop, but none of this was happening. The man, taking his time with each finger, was breaking them one by one with his huge hammer. As soon as he finished with my left hand, he stretched out my right hand and began to do the same. I made every effort to free myself, but the pain was too much and the strength of the man holding me back seemed superhuman. I began to run out of strength to fight and I invested all my energy in screaming in pain. My hands hurt, yes, but you know what hurt the most? Knowing that after I died, my wife and children would suffer something similar or even worse. As soon as he finished with my hands, the man stood up and looked at my legs. I knew what was about to happen. It was the turn of my toes. I couldn't see behind the man's masks, but I could feel them laughing. They were having a great time at the expense of my suffering, and they knew that they were going to have an even better time. But suddenly, everything changed. Before the man could bend down and stretch my feet, we heard an explosion coming from the kitchen, and suddenly, the man fell down. The explosion was the sound of a gun, and from the kitchen, I could see my neighbors entering the house armed to kill our invaders. At this, two of the three masked men ran desperately up the stairs. They both climbed up to my room and jumped out the window. One of them managed to escape, while the other broke his foot in the fall and was arrested a few seconds later, as the police were about to arrive. One of my neighbors walked over to the man with the hammer. He was on the ground, lifeless. My neighbors told me that they heard all the commotion, so they kept an eye on what was going on. When they heard me screaming, they knew they had to take action as soon as possible. As soon as the police arrived, they called an ambulance to treat my injuries. The criminals were quickly identified. They were only 19 and 20 years old, but they were already associated with cults and had a history of vandalism as teenagers. We never heard from the man who escaped, and from the profile of these kids, we probably never will. Anyway, now I have a house full of cameras and a WhatsApp group with the neighbors. We all protect each other. We will never again allow anything like what happened to us that day in my house to happen. Being a single mom of two twin boys is tough, especially if your kids are three-year-old toddlers. They are hyperactive and, and are always in need of supervision. So, just to be safe, I installed cameras all around the house. I'm a working mom, and I have to make sure the kids are safe in the house with the nanny while I go to work. Being a single mom also means between work, looking after the kids, and chores, I hardly get any time to shop for groceries or do anything for myself so I mostly rely on food and grocery delivery services. DoorDash is one of my favorites. They are quick and deliver whenever I need stuff no matter what time it is. Oftentimes I order stuff from DoorDash while I'm at work and the nanny takes the delivery for me. My twin sons, Alex and Adam, love home-cooked food, so I try to make meals from scratch as frequently as possible. They also like to play a lot, so I have a small park in the backyard for them. It has a kiddie pool, slides, a set of swings, and a trampoline. It's a good place to host play dates and small parties for kids as well. Sometimes while I'm at work, I like to watch my kids play in the park through the CCTV camera app. Also, we live in an area where wild animals often visit us, so a motion detection alert from the ring camera and the backyard camera helps us to be safe. However, last month, 
something very scary happened. Every evening I get home by 6, and I spend the rest of my day with my kids, and by 8.30 I make sure they are in bed. Mostly due to all the activities they do throughout the day, they fall asleep after dinner. Then I do chores around the house, clean up behind them, and rarely enjoy a glass of red wine by the fireplace while reading a book. But that day was especially exhausting, because the nanny had left early and I had to rush around the evening traffic to get back home to my kids. I made us dinner and made sure they were asleep. Afterwards, I hardly had any energy to do anything else, so I went to bed. Sometime around 3 a.m., I suddenly woke up. Someone was ringing the bell and knocking on the front door. I was terrified for a second, but then I heard a woman. Please open your door. It's your DoorDash delivery. But I had not ordered anything on DoorDash. Or had I? Sometimes all the work made me forgetful, so I checked my phone and sure enough, I hadn't ordered anything. And why would I order anything at that ungodly hour? I thought about opening the door and letting the poor delivery girl know that she had the wrong address. That's when I received a notification on my phone. There was motion detected in our backyard in my kids' play area. I wondered if it was a deer or, God forbid, a bear. Those things would come around once in a while to soak in the kiddie pool. So instead of going out of the house, I checked the live footage on the camera in the backyard and I just sat in my bed, frozen. There were four men in my backyard, right outside my kid's window, trying to break into the house. I was alone with my kids, and I had no firearms with me. Please, open the door. I have other deliveries. I do not have all night. The DoorDash girl was practically yelling now and banging on the door. Often, if there was no one to pick up the order, the DoorDash delivery person would just leave the stuff by the door, so this woman had no need to be so aggressive. The four men were wearing dark hoodies with hoods pulled up and a mask covering their faces. I couldn't see their faces through the cam, but I was scared shitless. That's when I switched to my ring camera and saw the woman. She might not have spotted my ring camera because she was constantly looking to the left where there is a path leading to my backyard and gesturing for something. It seemed like she was part of the gang as well. But at that moment, my first concern was protecting Alex and Adam. So I got out of bed, padded towards the kitchen, and grabbed a knife. Then, I headed to the kids' bedroom and immediately heard the people trying to break in from outside. Before calling the cops, I had to make sure my kids were safe. Luckily, we had a basement where we could hide till the police arrived in case those people succeeded on breaking in. Hey, Alex, Adam, wake up. We need to play a game. I whispered to my kids, praying the people outside did not hear me. My kids are dead sleepers, so they did not budge. So instead of waking them, I picked up Alex and ran downstairs as fast as I could without making any sound. Then I came back up for Adam, and soon all three of us were in the basement. Both of them were sleeping in two old lawn chairs while I paced the room, trying to call 911. The operator assured me that I had done the right thing and I should shut the basement door and have a weapon in case things went south. No matter the circumstance was I supposed to come up until the cops were at my door. I hung up the phone and then stared at the live footage on the phone. Those people were still trying, but they had no tools so it was tough to open the window or the door. The DoorDash girl was not helping them. I was still praying wishing they did not damage my home or harm me and my kids. A few minutes later, I saw the people argue amongst themselves. Two of them climbed the fence and walked away. Three others, including the DoorDash girl, followed once they realized the doors and windows were shut tight. 
Fifteen minutes later, the cops showed up, and finally, Adam and Alex woke up too. I brought them upstairs and told the cops what happened. I also showed them the footage. According to the footage, it looks like the gang had a plan in place. The DoorDash girl was the first part of the plan. If you opened the door for her, the rest of the four people would have ambushed you and force-entered the house. But when you did not open the door, the people started to find alternative ways into the house. But when they realized the locks were unbreakable, they abandoned the mission and ran away. From the looks of it, these people are novices at this. They may have even been teenagers trying to cause some chaos. Nevertheless, it's best you hid in the basement. You never know what those people wanted. Also, henceforth, be careful. And good thing you invested in a good security system. With that, the cops did a perimeter check and left. Never in my life had I ever been so scared for myself and my kids. But I was happy that we got out of it unscathed.